Good evening to you and welcome to Interface here on SABC3. Last September, the Department of Trade and Industry released a draft national policy on intellectual property. As far as healthcare provision in the public sector is concerned, the policy will align with international agreements. These agreements allow NGOs and the government to break patents in order to import cheaper medicines in medical emergencies. The Department of Health will be able to order medication cheaper as opposed to buying it from importers. International pharmaceutical companies are concerned about this policy and they say it will affect their profits. But Minister Aaron Mutsualedi says any attempts to block this policy will be tantamount to genocide. The minister is our guest this evening on Interface and as usual we welcome your thoughts and your comments on our Facebook page at Interface on SABC3 or you can tweet us at Tembisa Machele. Minister, good evening and thank you so much for your time. Good evening, Tembisa, and good evening to, to the viewers out there. Fairly strong words there about uh, any attempts to block this policy being tantamount to genocide. We'll talk a little bit about that in a moment, but please just outline for us, what does this policy actually say? Well, let me start by mapping out the history of, of this whole uh, issue. In 1995, the World Trade Organization was established, WTO. It gave birth to what is known as TRIPS, Trade Related Intellectual Property Rights, mm -hmm. meaning it was a set of rules to guide patents and property rights and innovation by individual companies. Before 1995, every country used to do as they wished in terms of patents. Okay. Now, with, yes, within TRIPS, they said innovators, that means somebody who innovates something new, must be given a patent for a period of 20 years, right? So in other words, during that 20 years, the person has got the monopoly to sell that product and no other person, even those who have got the capacity, do not have any right to, 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 to manufacture it. Now, this is about any product. Now, in health, we are talking mostly here of pharmaceuticals. That's where uh, uh, the whole issue of genocide started. Mm. It's about pharmaceuticals. Remember that uh, after being given a 20-year patent, after that 20 years, it means anybody can manufacture that particular type of medicine. Okay. Now, that, the medicine that is manufactured in that way is called the generic. Now, generics and the original product are exactly the same, exactly. There's no difference. The main difference is that the generic is much, 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 much affordable. Okay, Minister, let the me just try and see if I can understand this correctly. Is the new policy now saying instead of waiting that 20-year period, you can actually start uh, patenting or breaking patents from the get-go to try and get the medicines cheaper? No, the, the TRIPS itself provides for that. It provides for cases where, in the interest of the public, you can. There are several laws called a parallel importation, called a compulsory licensing, mm. called patent examination office. There are several laws that are inside trips, but they do not apply automatically. A country, every country, must incorporate them into their laws. That is what the Department of Trade and Industry has been trying to do. Uh, uh, in, in September when they released uh, 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 the policy for public comment. Okay, they we were trying to incorporate the normal trips flexibilities into the laws of the country so that we are able to apply them to the advantage of the citizens. Okay, so this would just bring South Africa in line with international practice. But Minister, what medicines or what medication would this apply to in particular? No, it applies to any medication, Tembisa, any medication. Okay. Let, let, me give you a, let me give you a simple example. Yeah. You, you, you know Panado, ev quite everybody knows it. Ne? Yes. The, the chemical name of Panado is paracetamol. The original company that manufactured it called it Panado. No other company except that original can call it Panado. But at the moment, there are many types of paracetamols in the market. Many. They are not called Panado, but they, they are called in different names. And, uh, and they are all generics. They are much cheaper than the original Panado because the argument here 
is that the company that manufactured Panado spent a lot of money in innovation, in doing tests, uh, 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 I mean, in animals and in human beings, mm. in applying for a license, they spend money so they get paid for that. And the generic company, they say, look, you didn't have to do any innovation, you just started by manufacturing, so you have got no money to recoup. recoup. That is the difference. So the intellectual property rights trips is to balance between that, balance between the rights of the original company, but the rights of citizens to affordable medicine, you need a balance here. Right. That means you are dealing here with an issue of rights and obligations. So let's, so let's look the, at the, the right side of it, Minister, because you've got the pharmaceutical companies who you've rightfully said have invested money uh, trying to develop uh, these medicines, and then once they have them, you as a country can then break those patents and manufacture those genetically and what the, uh, generically. And what they are saying is that this is state-sanctioned theft of property rights. Well, then they must say it's, it's multi, multilateral theft because it's not the South African state that came up with TRIPS because TRIPS allows exactly for that. We are not abolishing the 20 years, Tembis, by the way. Mm. In the new legislation, we are saying nothing about abolishing the 20-year patent period. That is still there. It's still recognized. And we are not even envisaging a situation where we abolish it. I think you need to understand that. Then I'm sure your next question will be, what then is the problem? Exactly. I'm sure you'll say that. What the problem is, is, is that, uh, let, let me mention the following problem. The first thing that made us leave it is that some companies even want to sidestep that 20-year patent process. They are doing something called evergreening. Mm. What's evergreening? When they realize the 20-year period is about to expire, they just take the same drug, tweak one molecule, just change one part of the drug, and want to name it a new drug altogether and apply for another 20 years or for, for an extension. And that is called evergreening because it means that 20 years, that was agreed upon internationally. It means you do no longer apply. Every year you can keep on tweaking uh, the molecule. That process of overgreening is, is what the law wants to abolish. Okay, I understand, even trying do it to, with I understand trying to get rid of, of that issue of evergreening, Minister, but how about the issue of people that have developed this? They have the intellectual rights over the, uh, the medication and now might lose out on profits. Is that not a, an argument that you understand? or that you appreciate at least? No, I appreciate it very much. And it's not me, by the way, Timbis, who determine this loss. Sure. The World Trade Organization law says you give them 20 years to make all those profits. And we are not interfering with that. Okay. We are not interfering with that 20 years in which it has been calculated internationally that it's enough period to get your profits. Would that apply to ARVs, Minister? It applies to any drug, and mostly ARVs, yes. Mm. And let me give you an example. India has already incorporated these TRIPS flexibilities into their laws. That's why at the moment India is called the pharmacy of the developing world, because in, in, in the whole world, 8 million people are on ARVs. 6 million Tembis are in Sub-Saharan Africa, and 80% of their drugs they get from India. That means all of us in Sub-Saharan Africa, we are able to treat six million people because of generic drugs from India. If that was not the case, we were finished, we were dead. That's why I use the word genocide. You can imagine six million people being exposed to a situation where they've got no availability to drugs or erratic availability simply because of expenses. Mm. What will have happened to those six million people? All right, let's pick this conversation up after the quick break, Minister. And as always, if you would like to join in this discussion, you can always email us or you can uh, send us a message on Facebook. It's Interface on SABC3 or you can tweet us at Tepin Zamachel.
Welcome back. You're watching Interface, and we are in conversation with the Minister of Health, Minister Aaron Mutsualedi. Minister, before the break, we we're talking a little bit about uh, whether or not this is state sanctioned theft of intellectual property rights. And uh, one of the questions I want to ask is logic would then say that if a med medicine is not patented, then it should be freely available to everybody. But according to research by the World Health Organization, they say this is not necessarily the case. Why is that? Uh, excuse me, I, I really don't understand your question. I'm saying you say if mm. non-patented drugs or medication should be freely available to citizens, which is what you are trying to do with the new policy to try and make it more accessible to everybody. But the WHO has released research saying that this is not entirely the case, where if you have a drug that is non-patented anywhere in the world, that it would automatically then be freely available to citizens. Yes, obviously it will depend on many other factors, like the procurement and logistical processes of that particular country. I'm so, sure that's what they were talking about, that some drugs might be freely available uh, and they are not patented, but they still don't reach the citizens. I'm sure it's an individual problem in that particular country. Is it not a problem in our country? Would you then no. be sorting out the issues that we have in this country by uh, introducing this policy? No, we don't have much of those problems. Where they exist, we do have solutions for them. Uh, 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 the, the, the new solutions that we, we are providing for the smooth delivery of medicines will solve all those problems. It doesn't mean after solving those problems at Tembiza that drugs will easily be available. Let me give you an example. We have got a cancer drug called cleavage, mm. right? It, it, in the original drug costs 876 rand, right? To treat you for, for, for every month you need that, 876 rand. But in India, because of tricks, flexibilities, because there's a generic, they pay only 86 rand. And if, if this new law is not incorporated, we'll keep on paying 876 rand. We can't be able to get that 86 rand from India, which is easily available to many people who suffer cancer. Okay. The second example is a TB drug called lanazolid. You know that we've got multi-drug resistant TB yes. these days. TB is a big killer. Lanazolid, the original drug costs 660 rand per tablet, Tembisa. But in India, it costs 10 rand per tablet because of trip flexibilities. So in the interest of human beings, is TB is number one killer in the country, and I want to save human beings. What do you expect me to do? But people that are manufacturing these drugs, Minister, are in it for business. So if you are going to now uh, interfere with how much profit they can make in a country, then you get headlines like we saw earlier this year, where they were threatening to withdraw their investments. They can't. They are actually lying. In fact, for your information, India, after passing these laws and becoming our pharmacy international, there is more investment in India. They are not pulling out. That is just but an idle threat to try and scare us off. And, and tell me, sir, let me come back to this, mm -hmm. because you keep on talking about people having to make profits. A meeting was held between the World Health Organization, World Trade Organization, and WIPO, World International Property Organization. World International Property Organization, uh, Intellectual Property Organization was established especially to protect manufacturers who are for profit, as you say. But the World Health Organization was established to protect the health of people. World Trade Organization was established to make trade rules. All these three organizations fall under United Nations. Yes. All of them are established for the interest of humanity. They have met and made an agreement on these issues. One of the agreement is that any innovation must be to the mutual advantage of the producer and the user. Mm. So that, yes, it says so. It must be for the mutual advantage because what do you innovate the drug for if you don't want me to use it? Because it's too expensive for me to use. What was your initial reason of innovating it if it's beyond my reach, if it's beyond the reach of all the citizens? All right, good point, Minister. It's, you, it's no different. Yes, it's no different from yeah. inventing a car and thereafter saying, no, it's my invention. Nobody else is, is allowed 
to venture into it and they, they can't use it. It's just beyond the reach of but anybody who's allowed in But if they use it, they, must, they must use it at the price at which I sell it. That's maybe what the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies are saying. That, that just come again, they are saying what? They are saying if you're going to use the car that I have invented, just using your analogy, then they must use it at the price at which I'm selling it as the inventor of the car. G gr granted, granted. We allow them to use it at that price for 20 years. After 20 years, we are not even saying they must not manufacture it. We must say they must allow others who can manufacture it at the lower price. Is that not fair? Okay, all right. So are you concerned at all, Minister, about uh, reports that there is a U.S.-based PR company that is running a counter campaign against, uh, against this policy, trying to show that this policy, in, in fact, will be economically and socially detrimental to this country? That's exactly what made me angry, Tembisa. We are a sovereign country. We have got a right in terms of international law to determine our own policies with our own citizens. That's why the Department of Trade and Industry issued that document for public comment, open public comment. If citizens say no, this is not OK, they should have come and said so openly. Mm. What made me explode with anger is that that company was trying to influence in a clandestine way. In other words, it was subverting a normal democratic process by a country. And that normal democratic process is subverted from a company situated in another part of the world. Okay. I don't think any, any sovereign country can, can, can tolerate that. Minister, we're going to take another a short break. And I mean, I would be very interested to hear from you if you think that these pharmaceutical com companies are just trying to bully South Africa because they feel that they can. But also, what are your thoughts there at home if you are listening to this conversation? What do you think uh, should be done? Is the Department of Health and South Africa on the right track with this? Or are they really taking away from these companies, these pharmaceutical companies that are claiming that their intellectual property rights are being infringed? Do give us your thoughts interface on SABC3. Stay with us. Welcome back, and we are wrapping up our discussion with the Minister of Health, Mr. Aaron Motswaledi. Minister, I was just asking before the break, do you think that these companies are essentially doing what they wouldn't do in another country here in South Africa, trying to bully the government into submission? Precisely. Precisely, Tembisa. And, and they are saying South Africa is ground zero. Uh, if, if they lose in South Africa, they say they are going to lose in the rest of the continent. Let me tell you what is happening in other parts of the uh, yes. world, Tembisa, to show that they are bulldozing us. Brazil has got what is called a patent examination office. When companies try to overgreen, that office will examine the patent and tell them that, no, 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 no. This is not a new drug. We've given you a 20-year patent long ago. There's no new innovation here. We are not granting you a patent. Because of that, between 2003 and 2008, Brazil issued only 272 patents. Mm -hmm. But in South Africa, every patent you apply for, every evergreening you do, you just get it. But why and has it been left for so long, only, Minister? Why, has, why, yeah, why let now? Me finish. Let me finish. In 2008... <laughs> Only South Africa issued 2,722 patents. Mm. And we are aware that patents that are rejected in Europe Ameri and America. Remember, Europe and America are very strong on patent protection. They are very strong. But we are aware that 40% of the patents that are rejected there are actually granted in South Africa. That's why we want to come in line with the rest of the world. But, and Minister, say, that doesn't answer that my doesn't... question. I'm asking why now, and we're running out of time. Well, I'm sure you, you, you need to ask the Department of Trade Industry that question. Why now? I'm just welcoming that they are correcting <laughs> a situation that All has right. been wrong for a long time. As to why they are doing it now, okay. I'm welcoming it. Well, yeah. And will it apply only to medication that's available in the public health no. system or even in private health care? No, actually, that intellectual property law, uh, 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 policy that the department has proposed is not only about medicine. It's about... Uh, software, it's about sports and culture, it's about agriculture, it's about medicine. They only pick up on medicine to attack, and those others were left. And yes, once it applies on medicine, it doesn't matter whether it's public or private. 
it applies across the board. So are we going to have cheaper medication as a result? Can we go now to our pharmacies and buy the medication for cheaper once the policy is, is affected? Oh, yes, absolutely. Once the policy is affected, there will be a lot of uh, cheaper generic alternatives. There's and, no question about it. And remember, when do you, remember and when do you Tembisa, the original happening? drug, the original drug is not banned. It will still be there, and they will be, be allowed to, to sell it at whatever price. They'll but just the be difference a, a is that there will be other competitors, yes. Right. There will be other competitors who will make it more affordable. That so is the difference. When do you foresee this uh, taking place, Minister? Well, as soon as possible, as soon as the policy is passed. Unfortunately, it's not in my hands. It's in the hands of the Department of Trade and Industry. But can if you give us an update? Hands, are you able to give us an update on where we are now with this policy? Well, they are still waiting for public comments. And I'm sure you are aware that they take about three months. Are they, and I'm I, not sure exactly how far they are. Are they engaging with the pharmaceutical companies that are enraged oh, by this? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They are engaging with them, definitely. The pharmaceutical companies have got a right, like any citizen and like any company, to submit they are, they are, they are, they are, I mean, their proposals. What I was against was to do it secretly in the manner in which it was being planned because it was subverting a democratic process. Right. Before we let you go, Minister, uh, just touching on some of the HIV and AIDS stats that came through showing that there's been uh, a slight increase, I believe. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about what those stats say? Oh, yes, yes. It's, it's not really, the, the slight increase is about prevalence, uh, Tembisa. And yesterday, when I was addressing the press conference organized by ANC, I was saying, I'm worried about the manner in which this whole thing was interpreted. interpreted. The prevalence has gone high, meaning we've got more people living with HIV and AIDS now. And we expect it to happen that way, Tembisa, because more people are alive now. These are people who will have died if we did not provide them with ARVs. Now that they are alive, you are able to count them. So the prevalence cannot stop, stand at the same place. It has to grow because more and more people are, are alive. But it's because not a reflection, is it not a reflection of uh, the, the effectiveness of ARVs is what you're saying? It's not it a reflection on that. It is a reflection of effectiveness of ARVs. That's number one, and it's the main thing. But the other is that we're at no stage did we stand up and announce to South Africans and say there is no more uh, 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 spread of HIV AIDS. It, it, it doesn't stop in any part of the world. HIV AIDS is still spreading, and as long as it's still spreading, uh, 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 there will be new people who get newly infected. And remember, this is an ultra marathon. It's not a small, you know, we're not just running for 100 meters. It's an ultra marathon. If you look at the NDP, they are giving a 20-year program to deal with this all HIV and AIDS. Yes. And during that 20-year ultra marathon, there will be steep hills, you know, which we have to climb. There will be descents, which are easier. That's still going to happen for the next 20 years. So and I was saying it gives an impression that now everything is lost, when actually it's reflecting exactly what we expected to happen in the country. But, Minister, what is concerning is that there are less people making use of condoms, according to the research. Yes, and, and, and Tembisa, my worry again is that it looks like the state was being blamed. Let me give you these figures. Yes. During the period under review, let's start 2008, because they reviewed 2008 to 2012, male condoms were 283 million by 2008. By 2012, we have increased them to half a billion. Female condoms were 3.9 million. By 2012, we have increased them to 12 million. Now, I can issue condoms, uh, uh, Tembisa, but what guarantee do I have that when people go to bed to have sex, they are actually using them? But we are issuing them, and uh, I'm giving you those figures, and this year, we are moving the number of condoms to 1 billion. Oh, Minister, this is definitely billion. another topic because the question that arises then is are we not misdirected in the solutions that we're trying to give? If you are issuing the condoms or giving them out and people are not using them as much as they should be, surely there's a disconnect there. But uh, we have run out of time and uh, as always, we will definitely get you back on and we'll discuss these issues. Thank you so much. I, I want to take up on that issue because even on that one you are wrong. Okay, how am I wrong? Tell me. Yes. No, no, you are wrong because the, the, the UN AIDS 
and said there's no single prevention method that works alone in the world. You need a combination prevention. And if you were to give me your time, I will tell you all the, the, the pre prevention co combination methods that we are doing, not only condoms, no, Minister, because it's we, not the only one. I, I get you, but I'm saying if one of the prevention methods is not working as well as it should be, surely there's concern there. Because it will be backed by the others. That's why you need a combination prevention, because no method works alone. You need a combination of many. And when you put them together, then they start working. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you so much for your time, Minister. We'll definitely get you back on to debate that issue. Thank you as well for making the time to join us here on Interface. Do continue the conversation, as always, on our Facebook page, Interface on SABC3, or on my Twitter line. It is at Tembisa Machele. Good night.